Hey, welcome back to another tutorial about the Prismatica TM cell shader tutorial tutorial. In this tutorial tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to make things appear metallic. So this isn't going to fix things with an actual metallic property, not appear, you know, white or black or however they're, you know, being artifacted. Because long story short, the metallic workflow in PBR rendering just will flat out not work with a cell shader because we're using the diffuse color in a calculation with the lighting. So we're, you know, dividing by the diffuse color and blah, blah, blah. And the metallic just completely messes with that. It throws everything out the window. So long story short, that should always be set to zero. However, by using some magic and a bit of smooth brain hackery, we can take this statue of a deformed man and we can make it look shiny look at that we've got some highlights and these highlights are all moving around as our camera moves around so you can see here on the back you know it looks it looks very glossy it looks very shiny very nice and let's give him a little let's give him a little turnaround as well look at that fantastic very shiny very nice looking and most importantly it looks metallic and so now you can see you know this looks super super shiny like polished gold and it's got some surface imperfections which you know all catch light very nicely now a cool thing about my method as opposed to using emissive color and a cube map is that this actually gets you know darker as the time of day decreases um, but it isn't just the time of day. It's not a parameter. It's actually tied to the amount of light that it is receiving. Because this is a post-process cell shader, we can do stuff like that, which is really cool. So you can see here, super, super shiny. On the back, it's still shiny, but it isn't like glowing or anything. So I'm going to explain how it works and we're going to set it up together. It's only going to take a couple of minutes and we're all going to be laughing at the end of it. Stop right there criminal scum. <laughs> I just wanted to announce we've added a $1 Patreon tier to our Patreon. So if you do have the means, you know, to swing a dollar our way, you can now do so. It is you guys that keep me afloat in these unprecedented times. Um, so back to the video. This method works by hijacking the specular channel of the object. What you're going to want to do is get a cube map sample. So this is texture sample parameter cube called T cube map 01. And it looks like this. You could use any sort of cloudy, noisy cube map or anything. And then what we do is we divide this by, let's say like 50 or something for like a pretty sort of standard, um, you know, slightly metallic look. And then we plug that into the specular channel of the material. So on your master material, you know, you could have a thing here, which is called like shininess or something. So that's it on the material side of things. And then inside your post-process cell shader Prismatica TMTM, -TM, we're going to retrieve the specular data and we're going to do stuff with it. So if we were to just plug the specular buffer into the output of the cell shader by itself, this is what that G buffer is actually seeing. And so out of everything in this scene, only this fat man and this ball have specular output. And so what we do is we take that texture, we multiply it 100. Now, the reason that we multiply it by 100 in here is because we're dividing it by 100 as default in the material. And we'll talk about that in just a second on why we do that. So then what we're going to do, we're going to get our lighting calculation and we're going to multiply this specular value by the lighting calculation so that if the light equals zero, then the specular equals zero. And then we add that to the lighting calculation. So if there is light, we will take the specular value and we will add that to the lighting calculation. And because it's actually being added into the lighting calculation of the cell shaded bands, you still get the sort of cell shaded effect. So you can see here, we've got two colors. We've got my neutral and my dark shadows. And you can see that the reflection, you know, the metallicness is actually being cell shaded, which is really, really cool. Sort of preserves the effect. And then up here, we take a branch off of that 
and into our white threshold of which if you've done my little optimizations in the description of the original video, you're getting the post process input zero and we're going to add the specular value to that. And then we put that into the A is greater than B. And so the reason that we do that as well as why we multiply it by a hundred inside the post process is so you can use this to get things like, you know, the glimmer on the water, which are blooming really brightly, you know, it's, it's affecting the camera bloom because it's so bright. And, you know, just to demonstrate, we've got these really bright blooming sparkles on the water and you can see in my blowing sand shader i'm using that sort of method as well i'm using the specular channel in combination with the post process to get these sparkles without using emissive color because if it was emissive then we'd still be getting the sparkles at night time so by using this specular method and multiplying it by the initial lighting calculation we only get it during the day or alternatively to sunlight, if there is like, you know, a torch or just some light source nearby, then we'll still get the sparkles. Otherwise we don't get sparkles. So that sums up the entire method that I use to get sort of glossy, shiny looking objects in my cell shader. The moral of the story is set your metallic values to zero. Just don't use them. And as for your specular, you will, and, <laughs> and this is important. And I almost forgot to mention this. Your specular value for anything that you don't want to be glowing super, super brightly needs to be set to zero. Because the default specular value of an object is 0 0.5, and we're multiplying that by 100 in the post process, all of your default materials will appear super, super bright and white. So you need to set it to zero explicitly. So if you have been using my cell shader, which I know a lot of you have, I hope you enjoy this little upgrade that we just made in a few minutes. And as mentioned at the start of the video, we have added a $1 Patreon tier. So if you would have bought this cell shader on the marketplace for, you know, 20 bucks or something, I would really appreciate if you would consider subscribing to our Patreon. If you need any help with cell shader, materials, any of my tutorials, Unreal Engine in general, any auxiliary programs, Blender, Quixel Mixer, Substance Painter, all of that jazz, join our Discord. We have 24-7 support. It's definitely a great place to be. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.